I am Pastor Andrew Perpina, and thank you for tuning in to Holy Nation Church of Memphis, Empowering You for Life Bible Study. And that's right. Come on. I just want to tell if anybody is trying to go to YouTube, if you know anybody trying to go to Facebook, rather, tell them we are over here on uh, uh, our YouTube channel, Holy Nation Church of Memphis YouTube. Facebook is not up this evening, and that's all right. We're all over in the YouTube sanctuary and the Zoom sanctuary. And we thank God we have a wonderful teaching that we're going to uh, uh, finalize this evening. Dealing with heaven and hell is are they relevant? Heaven and hell. We're gonna. I want you to talk. Uh, we have some great uh, 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 Bible scholars on the air that are going to talk to us as well as I see Elder Bunton coming up out there and I see uh, you can even even talk to us back on uh, our YouTube on the comment section we got a little delay a few 20 30 seconds but we'll try to keep you in the loop as well and we thank God for you we thank God for you listen I want to do this let's pray most gracious Heavenly Father we thank you for this day we thank you for our lives we thank you for health and strength I ask you to look upon us I ask you to decrease me and increase thee and me that I might speak, herald, preach, proclaim, teach unadulterated gospel with power and clarity. Say it in your contracts of counsel. You have no authority here in this place or in this space today. We thank you, God. We thank you for all. We thank you for our lives, health, and strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, we thank God for you. We thank God. Hey, Jacqueline Ramson, we thank God for you. And all of you, I see you. Uh, Sister Crystal and Deborah Fay and Mother Cecily and who who else is out there, y'all? Let me know who's out there. Elder Button, crank your camera up, and Sister Donna, crank your camera. We want to see y'all today, so we can get that Mother Cecily still hiding down there. You see that, uh, uh, Deborah Fay? Deborah Fay, turn your camera on, uh, uh, so uh, we can get get going here. Listen, heaven and hell relevancy. Uh, heaven and hell, um, dealing with eternal life. Um, I want to start off about asking some questions, and I want to get into this, and I want you guys to talk to me and, and talk to the people, and, and we I don't know all the answers, but I do know who does, and that is the Lord. And so uh, as we deal with heaven and hell, we're also paralleling that with truth. And the opposite of truth, truth, uh, the, the foundational truth. Hello, Jackie. All right. Now, so when we begin to think about heaven and hell, can somebody tell me just first blush? We've been talking about this for the last two weeks. Uh, what is heaven to somebody? What is it? Where, where is heaven? What is heaven? Can somebody talk to me about that? Don't be shy. Heaven. Place for preparing people to go back with the Lord. To go back with the Lord. Okay. Uh, a prepared place for prepared people to go and, and be with the Lord. To be with the Lord. Amen. Okay. Anybody else? Heaven. Heaven. Because when we deal with this heaven, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm saying to be with the Lord in eternity once we leave this earthly place. Uh huh. If you have uh, confessed your belief in Jesus Christ, then you will go to heaven and okay. you will be with Him eternally. So there's a criteria. There's some some prerequisites, if you would, right? Yes. Uh, heaven. Somebody else, come on, get talk to me about heaven. Talk to me about heaven. Why would I want somebody's watching this? Why would they want to be a Christian? Because we say Christians will will spend their eternal life uh, with Jesus Christ. Where he's going away to prepare a place. We don't know where that place is. We always look up for heaven or whatever. Uh, because I guess uh, in some of the texts it talks about him descending, coming from uh, up to down to earth. So, uh, but uh, what is heaven? Talk to me. Were they very thorough? It's a place of reward for doing the will of God 
a place from suffering, a place of blessing, a place of healing. Oh, okay. It's a place we would want to be, we would want to spend eternal life. Now, we know when we're here on earth, uh, we spend time, you know. Uh, it's once upon a man, everybody that is born will die except the Lord that uh, uh, comes in the, in the middle of in and we, we be caught up. Uh, some of those will be like that caught up in the air. But uh, after that, after that, uh, the, the words you said reward, uh, Crystal said that special place. Uh, what else? What, what else? Anybody else? Give, give me some more adjectives. Give me some more descriptives of heaven. Why would somebody want to go to heaven? Because uh, when we deal with heaven, we're dealing with hell as well. And I heard somebody in another conversation one time said, I wouldn't want to be uh, 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 scared into being saved. You know, I wouldn't want to, you know, I wouldn't want to just be saved because to keep from going to hell. Uh, sounds like a pretty good idea to me, but I don't know. You see what I'm saying? But we understand that heaven, uh, all of the attributes of heaven is an eternal place. Their faith said uh, it's a place of reward. It's a place uh, that, that we would want to spend eternity. It's a place where our Lord and Savior is. It's a place where God is. It's a place where those loved ones that have died in the faith, they will be as well, right? Anybody yeah. else want to talk about heaven right quick? You just made a statement, Pastor, about you hearing another conversation of someone not wanting to be scared into yeah. heaven. But me accepting Christ at seven, that's all I can think about. <laughs> down on that morning's bench and I was seven and they were talking about heaven is a great place but they were also talking about what hell is yes I was like I just do I do not want to go there I pass go I don't want to go there but of course as I've grown in the faith you understand more and it's a choice it's not a choice of fear but it's a choice of love it's a choice of loyalty it's a choice of submission um, but depending on where your level is in my seven-year-old mind that's all I could comprehend I couldn't comprehend submission and peace and obedience all I can comprehend is I do not want to go to hell it's a bad place just I just don't want to go there amen amen anybody else purpose as well amen anybody else Hell, you know, and they were having, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and people will get real philosophical on you and things of that nature. But like you said, when you are a child uh, slash immature, you can be a, 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 a 65 year old, but you're a child in your mind or in, when it comes to the things of God. And so uh, when we are dealing in an immature state, uh, uh, of being however chronos old age that is we need some things that speak literally to our fleshly man uh in my opinion to get us to begin to at least give an ear to what the lord is saying to us anybody else this is good yeah you know something pastor uh today we was uh speaking to the children about uh, the stars, uh, well, the planets of the earth and, and how um, the uh, teacher had lined them up to, to, uh, to be different planets. And I was just thinking uh, up in heaven about where all the, you know, where the stars at. I want to go to heaven uh, to see a, a different place to be. Uh, where back in the day, what is it called? Uh, I don't really know what celestial, mm -hmm. uh, heaven, you know, up in the, 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 the seventh heaven, the celestial show. Yes, yes. Right. I'm right. thinking, you know, you know, just to be at a place where, uh, where I'd heard about, I read about the, the streets of pay would go a beautiful place, you know, where there would be no more sickness, uh, disease, uh, uh, heartaches and pain and all that. I want to go to heaven. Yeah, yeah. And see, 
that's why we've been dealing with truth. I, you know, I want to start off dealing with heaven and hell. And the Lord said, why deal with the, the, the college level when you need to deal with the primary? And the primary is this. We can talk about heaven. We can talk about hell. We can talk about eternal life. We can talk about uh, celestial shores and things of that nature. But if you don't believe what the Bible is saying, or if you don't believe it is truth, not true, but truth in and of itself, uh, then we have a hard time uh, having faith in heaven, having uh, uh, a, 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 I guess, um, a concern about hell. And so uh, when we're living in this life, a lot of coming up behind me, I'm an older person, but, but our children, our grandchildren, they're living in a season right now uh, that's dealing with um, no absolutes. There is, they're living their own truth. Uh, it does not net two plus two does not necessarily equal four today. It's according to how you feel. Uh, uh, you are you you can be a boy, or you cannot want to be a boy. You can be whatever you want to be. You can be a girl, or you cannot be a girl. It's up to you these days. So when you began to deal with that, the enemy is so shrewd. It begins to unravel and undermine in our mind because we because you think like that that doesn't make it true just because you talk like that that doesn't make it true but 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 we want to have the mind of Christ we want to have the mind of Christ and that's where the the enemy is fighting his last stand in the bat the battlefield of the mind and so here's the thing that now Everything is up for grabs. Everything is up for grabs. We we know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. But keep on living. Somebody is going to argue that point. That east is not east. West is not west. North is not north. And south is not south. Those are those, those absolutes. We cannot have. The enemy cannot have you uh, having a fundus understanding about anything so when it comes to the bible when it comes to uh we believe in that the bible is uh the infallible written uh, word of god uh that he's the spirit of god uh uh uh, uh led men inspired men uh spiritually uh miraculously to do these things. Well, a, uh, somebody that's an unbeliever, they can't understand that. They cannot understand that. You cannot, and, and, and the Lord talks about these things. These are these are things that you cannot understand. That's why somebody said, and I'm going to let you guys jump in in a minute. Uh, 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 when when God told Adam, Eve, don't be dealing with the tree. Somebody said, well, why, why did he put the tree there in the first place? Because he's God. He's our father. Uh, it's like you tell it, tell your children, don't eat the apple, don't touch the pear, uh, leave the candy alone, and they did. Well, you're not going to move everything out of the way because your child is undisciplined and hard-headed. That's part of the test. That's part of growing them. That's part of maturing them. And so that's that's where we're going to. We have to understand that uh, in this life of heaven and hell, relevancy, uh, you can say it's not relevant. A person can say heaven is not relevant. Hell is not relevant. That's, that's your opinion. But you will find out the truth later. Anybody want to jump in on that? Anywhere in there. You know, uh, uh, Pastor Bapina, that's one thing that makes you feel good about heaven. If you know your loved one or somebody you really care for was saved and delivered and they died all of a sudden, knowing that they that they were saved and they went to heaven, you can deal with their death so much better. Because if an individual is not saved, it can, it, it, you will think about it. I, and that's... The one thing that I, I think about most of all is that part of it, knowing that a particular individual, your loved one or your friends, 
will make it to heaven. And there's no more evil, particularly the people who have suffered, like the people are suffering in Ukraine. If they die saved, they'll meet the Lord in the sky. And those were some things that I was thinking about. Yeah, heaven is a, is a comfort. Heaven is a comfort. Uh, when we begin to think about life in general, one thing about God we have to understand, he is a just God. And so he's not a, a judge. He's the just judge. He's the just God. And there is, in being just, in being uh, truthful, there is balance there. There is balance there. So just to talk about heaven, oh, I can't wait. Everybody's going to heaven. Carlton Pearson says everybody's going to heaven, but a few folk, he don't know how many are not going, but he, he got that, that revelation that everybody's going. Well, here's the thing. Jesus died for the world. Yes, he did. He died for the world that you and I may have a, here comes, right, a right to choose, not a right uh, to go just because no matter how you live this life. Do you understand everything that we have gone through brings about a level of maturity, a level of your trials, your tribulations, the Bible says, come to make us strong. Why do they, why, why does, do I need to be strong? Why do you need to be, why do we need to be strong? If we need to be strong. We need to be mature. We need to be able to do more for the Lord. We need to be able to carry and bear others' burdens. We need to be able to pray without ceasing, whether we feel like it or not. It, it's, it's all part of Christian maturity. And so, when you ask me, you know, whatever your your struggle is, uh, whatever your your trials are, whatever uh, your discomforts are, if when you begin to look at it like this, that you know what, if God allowed this to come to me, if God allowed the pandemic to come to us, He is speaking even through the testing. He is those that He chasteneth. He loved. Those, uh, uh, the enemy is saying, go out there, the devil, Satan, he's saying, go out there, do your thing, do whatever you want to do, girl, do whatever you want to do, boy, it, it's your thing, do what you want to do, and all that kind of, all that kind of stuff, but at the end of the day, there is, there is going to be a wage, and the Bible says the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. That's why people are, the Bible says it, there will in the last, there'll be a great falling away. Why will there be a great falling away? Because people, uh, uh, the enemy is tricking uh, uh, the world like there are no truths. There, uh, you know, it ain't no Santa Claus, so it ain't no so 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 so. Not in the same, uh, not in the same area at all. And so we have to be able to come to the resolve that uh, uh, there are some definites, there are some foundational truths that you and I as believers must hold fast to, uh, that which is good. And you got to hold fast to it, uh, no matter how you, you, whatever you're going through, what you lose, what you gain. Uh, sometimes we get to say, oh my God, we've arrived. We're doing real good. Uh, God must like me. And so I don't have to do all that I did do. I don't have to get up in the morning at six and pray. I don't have to do all these things because God is blessing me. I'm living in the overflow. No, listen, though his grace is sufficient. Sometimes we begin to live off of others uh, seeds that have already been planted. We're living off of that harvest of our family seed a lot of times. Our faith, we're living off of the, uh, of the faith of others. And so somebody is depending on you to, to remain faithful. Somebody is depending on you to become faithful. Anybody want to jump in on this heaven uh, before I go to the other side? Um, you mentioned about the um, pandemic and you mentioned about um, 
Why do we need to go through tests? Why do we need to go through trials? Nobody wakes up saying, oh, I'm just ready to face this sickness. I'm ready to go ahead and have financial ruin. I'm ready to have an argument with my spouse. I'm ready for my children to cut up. I'm ready to be in a car accident. Nobody wakes up saying that. Um, but those who believe in Jesus Christ, once you come on the other side, you accept the permissible will of God and you understand why he had to allow some things to happen to either grow you, to grow someone else, for a seed to be planted. It's all about the kingdom going forth, not your personal agenda. Our job is to line up with his agenda and what he wants. He's not to line up with ours. But uh, like you said, nobody... Nobody wakes up saying that I want to test. I want to try. Oh, come on, Jesus, try me. No, nobody's saying that. You want the testimony. I've actually said that out, out loud to the Lord. God, I want the testimony, but I do not want this test. <laughs> I have just been honest. I do not want this test. I want all this fruit that you're talking about. And I want, mm -hmm, yeah, I want all of that. But I do not want to go through what I have to go through to receive it. So um, those are some things that we just can't get around. Um, and like you said, whether you believe in heaven or hell, you will soon find out. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Yeah, I wanted to piggyback on what Sister Krista said. Sister Krista, you stated that uh, no one gets up saying those things uh, about whether or not they were ready to face this or rather have an uh, altercation with their spouse or children, however way. But I wake up every morning. I don't care what time it is throughout the, even if I get up in the middle of the night and use the restroom, I'm, I'm saying, Lord, I thank you because sometimes somebody didn't wake up in the morning. Somebody did not, uh, uh, didn't make it through the night, however way, but every time I wake up out of the bed, I say, Lord, I thank you. That's even in the middle of the night. And, 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 and that right there, uh, <clears throat> means enough for me because I people just take life for granted and what pastor stated earlier about uh children young people this generation now that they, they, they just I don't know I don't know what didn't happen to them I I ain't just talking about other folks children it starts with my own children and I know they've been taught better so uh it it uh, it bothers me it saddens me uh just to think about hey, all these sacrifices that uh, uh, my husband and I went through for for our kids, and this is how y'all repay me. That's why I just want to get them and choke them, you know. But uh, realistically, I can't do that. But I'm like, no, oh, this is not how you was taught. Uh, you know, we taught you, we brought you up in homes. You didn't, you didn't see me. You didn't see us uh, at home. Uh, doing worthy things or saying worthy word, uh, worldly words or any of those things because I tried to make a point that, you know, if I came from a dysfunctional home growing up, this ain't how I want my family to life to be. So I tried to uh, uh, do better than what how my upbringing was. Not to say that it was bad or anything, but I knew a difference even at a young age. And when I got saved and I knew right from wrong at a very early age. And so uh, that's my take on it. All right. All right. I think your take is where a lot of, a lot of people are. Um, um, but here's the thing. The seeds that you sow, uh, don't ever give up on the seeds that you sow because they are coming back. That is a law. That is a principle. You sow good seeds, good seeds are going to come back. Uh, and that, that will happen in God's own timing. Uh, when we deal with hell, hell, so we know heaven is the place that the Lord resides, the kingdom, the heavenly kingdom, and that its host. But then we know hell. Hell is that place designed for Satan and his angels, his followers. A hell is nothing that was designed to penalize man. But here's the thing. God did something in his wisdom. He created us and he made us free moral agents. He made us... Uh, uh, a little lower than the angels and he gave us a will and I hear people say well a loving God will not send his children to hell he will not send you to heaven he will not send you I don't care how good you are God does not send you to heaven I don't care how bad you are God does not send you 
to hell. Guess what? You send yourself. Amen. Because he has given us uh, the ability to have dominion. He, he has given us the ability to have what we say in the process of life. That's that's the difference between us. Uh, when we begin to talk about hell, uh, sometimes people have the imagery, uh, the Im imagery of Dante's Inferno. Dante, Dante was an Italian author, and he wrote about the nine circles of hell and going through all of these phases of hell, and 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 at the end of the thing. He made it out of hell. He made it out of hell to purgatory, and he made it on back out. Isn't that something? That was a story. That is a story. You are, and, and people, you, listen, you are an eternal being. I don't care if you don't believe in Jesus. Somewhere in the back of your mind, you will understand that you are an eternal being. You don't ever die. You're, this skin, this earth suit will lie down. Nobody, I don't care, the person, the oldest person in the world, can, you cannot tell them that they are 115 years old in their mind. Uh, the 80 year old person, you cannot tell them they are 80 year old in their mind. The 60 year old, some mm -hmm, me, you can't tell me I'm 60 some years old in my in my mind. My, but my body will let me know that this flesh will let you know you somewhere older than your mind, your mind. That's why. So let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. We have to make sure that our mind is connected uh, and stays connected to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when we do lay down, see nobody. It's like it's like life insurance. Nobody. Listen, if if you want somebody to love you real good after you gone. Leave them some life insurance. They will call your name forever. But if you leave them some bills and no life insurance, they got something to think about you because it lets people know you really don't know how much a person loves you until they go. You really don't know until the absence is there. Uh, when you find out that they took care of business, touch your neighbor, they took care of business uh, 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 knowing that they were not going to be there. It's like uh, when when the older people would uh, plant trees that they knew they would not live long enough to enjoy the shade from the tree, but they knew that somebody else was coming in their their lineage in their family and they planted trees people uh, a lot of times they don't plant trees anymore they're like they like to bulldoze the trees down and put uh houses and things that they are going to enjoy uh that's why we have an, uh, i feel global warming and all these things because man is selfish man uh is only concerned about what's going on in his lifespan uh, 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 the, the future, if, if he's not part of the futuristic uh, 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 objectives, it's hard for man to do something outside of the scope of that. So you, you have to be very careful. That's why I, the enemy does not want you to think about the eternal existence where we're going to spend eternity uh and jeremiah the lord said before the foundation of the world whether i knew you and i ordained you in other words I, I i had a job already for you i had a position for you and i anointed you for that position even before you even became to to come onto this earth that means that that when we that we're going back to the father now how long we stay with the father is based upon how we go through this earthly transition are we learning anything and so when we deal with this heaven and hell uh one thing i want to deal with i want to ask a question what is truth because that's where we are wrestling, I feel. Uh, mankind is wrestling with what is truth. You know, people are like, I'm living out my own truth. My truth. Listen, what is truth in the first place? Can anybody stay up at that? What is truth? 
Anybody? Can anybody tell me what truth is? Nobody. Truth. Uh, what is synonymous to truth? As we think about, uh, as we deal in the Bible and the Holy Writ, what is synonymous to truth? When we say, uh, we, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Know the truth. What, what is it that we're supposed to be knowing? What is truth? Or, or what is synonymous to truth? Facts. Uh, facts. Facts. Believe. Facts. 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 Gotcha. Facts. Belief. I heard. Anybody else? Come on, let's do it. Because until we get with this, until we understand what it is, it's going to be hard to follow it. Uh, to the end. It's going to be hard. Uh, the enemy, here's the thing about the enemy. The enemy, here, okay, when you are a champion, challenges are all always going to come, right? If you are a champion, challenges are always going to come. So when you are um, holding the belt, when you are uh, in sitting in the place of power, hear me what I'm saying. When if you're sitting in, there will always be people and things coming to unseat you. They're coming to challenge you, and so what they do is they study you. They study you. They study you. And the enemy is the uh, he is the prosecutor. He is the father of lies. He, the Bible says he's a liar and the father of lies. In other words, if he's going to prosecute you, he's going to say stuff that you did not say, but he's also going to say stuff that you did say. He's going to come try to sway public opinion about how bad you are, that you don't really love the Lord, things of that nature. But you got to know the truth. Because for you to know a lie, you got to know the truth. A lot of people are being dissuaded and fooled and led astray because they don't know the truth. You talk about, um, uh, heard uh, Bishop was talking about the black Israelites and the Muslim nation and all these things. A lot of people get dissuaded because they don't know the truth. Sometimes even as church people, we have not... Uh, supported the truth or portrayed truth as we should have. And so the enemy rushes in and points his finger and says, see, I told you he wasn't all of that. See, I told you she wasn't all of that. It's not all of that. He, he first thing he does is go to showing you, showing the people you, but he's not going to ever show them Jesus. So when we begin to talk about the truth, we need to know what the truth is. The truth possesses characteristics from honesty. The truth is uh, good faith. The truth is sincerity. Uh, and, and, and it's an agreement of Deborah Faye said, the truth is agreement of fact or reality in particular. It's an agreement of fact or reality. So the truth, when you, if you begin to try to define the truth, it's hard to define the truth. The philosophers and, and all of those and the scholars have had uh, great debates and still having about literally what is truth. But, but, but truth is a universal topic that, that uh, we all seek to understand. So let's uncover some possible characteristics of truth. Uh, go with me. Uh, I'm going to give you two scriptures to cut, to flip over. 1 John 1, 6 through 8. 1 John 1, 6 through 8. And then uh, get John 18, 33. John 18 and 33. But the first one we want to deal with is 1 John 1, 6 and 8. When you get that, say amen. 1 John 1, 6 and 8. And this is dealing with what is truth, that question of what is truth. See, when people start saying, uh, I'm living out my own truth, that what they're saying is, 
they don't know what truth is. They, they have not a clue of what truth is. They're, so they're, they're just talking. Uh, see, the thing about the Bible, the Bible is the infallible written word of God because there's nothing a tit or a tittle in the Bible where, pe where it's just talking. The Bible uh, 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 corresponds, it hinges, it fits tightly together. Amen. First John 1 and 6, and it says, If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. If, if, if you say you have fellowship with Jesus and walk in darkness, uh, we lie and do not the truth. So here's the thing. The, the, another synonym for truth is, uh, uh, the face said fact, and that is true. Another synonym is light. You hear him talk about the light. Jesus is the light of the world. He is the truth. He is the light of the world. So, so it says, uh, if we that have fellowship with him walk in darkness, we lie, uh huh, and do not the truth. See, see, a lot of times we are doing certain things in the church and the world sees it. And but we are, we're proclaiming light, but we are doing dark things. And the Bible simply says it is a lie. It is a lie. Verse seven says this, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, See what I'm saying? Whatever the Lord is doing, the, the purity, the truth, the characteristics of of truth uh if if but if we walk in the light and he is in the light we have fellowship one with another why do it because if the lord is walking in the light and uh you are walking in the light and i am walking in the light and somebody else is walking in the light the common denominator of that fraction is the lord jesus Christ. In other words, the Lord makes us whole. The Lord makes us one. The Lord makes us uh, uh, not the same, but the Lord makes us one. Not sameness, but but that that unity. Where there's unity, there is. See, the enemy tries to fraction us. It tries to bring in a lie to bring about flaws in our character. But we are always striving to have the personhood and the character of the Lord Jesus Christ. So check this out. So it says, uh, uh, we have fellowship with one another. And the, here comes the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth, T-H, cleanseth us. And not cleanse us like past tense. You clean and you you one and done. No, see the enemy comes to 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 uh, try to disenfranchise us as far as our faith because if you fall, if you make a mistake as a human being, whatever, then then the devil says, see 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 see. The the Bible says if you do this, he cleans you. You ain't clean no more, so you a lie. That ain't what the Bible says. It cleanses. Thus, TH is a continuation, a process of becoming holy. We are holy without the Lord. No man. Hallelujah. We are only what, what we are to become based upon our mind and heart being uh, 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 given over to the Lord Jesus Christ. So it says this. So cleanses us from all sin. Mm -hmm. And if we say that we have no sin, we here comes we deceive it ourselves, and the truth is not in us. In other words, what the Lord is trying to do for you, He can't do for you because you just lied about He had already done it for you. The Lord is not calling you to 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 say you have arrived. The Bible is saying this truth, if you take this truth of the word, the whole, he's saying, listen, I understand. I understand your humanity. I understand your infallibility. I understand that, that you have some ups and downs, even when nobody is pushing you, when nobody is holding you back. Sometimes you're holding yourself back. 
I understand those things. That's why I send grace. That's why I have mercy and all of these things. And there is a process, a continued process of you becoming holy. Oh, Anybody want to talk about that? Yes. Um, in the statement when you said he understands our 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 era, he understands our humanity. And he because he understands that, it's not an excuse to not live right. A right. You say, oh, because God understands me. He knows my heart. I'm just going to yeah. No, it's not an excuse to live any way you want to. Right. Um, the Bible talks about it in 2 Timothy 2.15, to study, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, meaning you are responsible as believers. We're responsible to study the word so that we know what to do. So that we won't be lulled into doing something wrong. And we won't be, as, as it says, talk about salt without its flavor. We won't be unseasoned so that we'll know what to do. But uh, a lot of times that humanity, and I, I've said the same thing, it pulls on me. And I'll say, well, God, you know, you know my heart. He's like, yeah, uh -huh, I do know your heart. And I know you know the word. And I know you know what you're supposed to be doing. So that's not an excuse because we like to look at the loving part of God. We like to look at the, oh, his mercy and his grace. But yes, he is also a righteous judge. You can't have this part without the other part. He is that in totality. So in that we can't remember, we can't forget because he does know our humanness. He gives you that support. He gives you his word. He tells you what you need to do. He left us with the Holy Spirit to give us direction and so we can follow him. Uh, in the Bible, I was Googling the other day. I was I was fearful and I was upset and I Googled and it said the word fear not is in the Bible 365 times. I said, okay, so he has covered me for every day that I was going to be scared. I thought <laughs> he's, he's, he's crossed out all my excuses, whatever I thought I could come up with an excuse. Oh my goodness. Care of that. So I am accountable because I know the word and I know him. I'm accountable to live for him. And I'm going to have to answer for that. And ultimately, like you said, pastor, it's going to end up with me either residing in heaven or me residing in hell. <laughs> right. Amen. Intentional grounding, Elder Rick. <laughs> you, you got the ball. You got blockers. You got the plays. Uh, but, but sometimes you can be in a situation where you just find yourself throwing the ball up in the stands uh, for an interception because of whatever reason. Sometimes it was a busted play. And the Lord is prepared for that. The thing about it is, just like you said, God knows our heart. With our mind, with our heart, we should meditate. Here's the thing. Uh, uh, we should be a full-time participant in this life of holy living. A full-time participant. If you are in, on vacation, you don't take a vacation from the Lord. Right. If, yeah, if you're <laughs> sick. You don't, oh, baby, I'm, I'm down here in the, 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 the Dominican Republic, and I look to the left, ain't no cell phones out here. Woo -wee. Praise God. You got nerve to say praise God. You know what I'm saying? I'm finna, I'm finna take my weave off. I, you, you know, whatever it is, you know. I'm gonna put my shades on. I can take my mask off and, and just, ha listen, here comes, be myself. That's the most scariest thing thing that anybody need to be uh of the, you want to be yourself listen you can be in church 24 hours a day and god still knows yourself mm. you, you 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 can be around on the prayer line every morning but god knows your real self uh you cannot fool him and and, and the thing about it is uh when we begin to talk about truth truth i got to just keep hammering what is truth what is truth? Uh, when you say, if we say that we have not sinned, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. God is saying, he's not saying that. See, somebody that is fleshly, somebody, a carnal mind was saying, well, why you got to be so hard? Why you got to be so hard? Why God got to be so hard? Why you got to be so hard? That's hard. No, that's loving. Because if you read the truth, it already said he cleanseth you. He is continuously cleaning you because he knows you're going to need cleaning. Even in your best day, your most holy highest day, you're going to need cleaning. But when you feel like you don't need cleaning, 
That's when you become alive. Hallelujah. And that's a lot of times that's what the world holds against us because we are, I was in a class today, how to testify, how to witness. We have to be so very careful on how to witness. The best way to witness is to tell how you became a, 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 a Christian, how, how the Lord has cleaned you up. Here it comes. And is continuously in the process of holy living. You begin to tell a person that. What, but a lot of times what we do. We come at people like we have a degree in holiness. That like we have a degree in Christianity. You, you know. And, and we got not only a degree, Ella Rick. But we got different levels of degrees. Oh, you know. Nice. I got an associate. You got an associate's degree. You got a bachelor's degree. Oh, you got a GED. You can't tell me nothing about God. Uh, you know. And listen. Some of y'all even dropped out of, out of the Lord. So we have to be so careful. Loving the mind, the heart. We have to. With 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 with, with uh, uh, loving kindness, we have to do like Jesus did. Jesus wasn't setting out people on time. He said, and he really didn't set them out. He just put them out uh, of the temple because they were transgressing. And so um, that's how we're dealing. Let's let's run forward. Oh my God! Uh, so what is truth? How important is truth? Boo 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 boo. How important is truth? John 18 and 33. Let's see. Uh, that's dealing with Pilate and dealing with uh, Jesus at the judgment hall. How, how important is truth? Uh, Jesus, Jesus got up and he began. Pilate was checking him out. Uh, Pilate's wife was checking him out. And the Jews did not care. They did not care. Jesus was threatening. Here comes their way of life. How you living? He was threatening their way of life. Have you ever been on a job where you could do the job better because the way of life? Hey, listen, we only we only put out about fifty of these things a day, and you coming out where you going? We'll be putting out sixty or seventy. Listen, you're messing with my way of life. You you got us working too hard. For this little change that we getting. And so uh, you need to slow down because you're messing with my way of life. And, you, and, and, and there are so many examples of the way of life. But 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 so so Pilate is looking uh, uh, at this guy and he's talking to him. Let's see. Let's see. Let's go down. Um, let's, let's, Jesus, let's, let's just read it. Then Pilate entered into the judgment kingdom, judgment hall, and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Question. Art yeah. thou the king of the Jews? Oh, be careful for the questions because the questions require the truth. Uh huh. Art thou the king of the Jews? You know, Pilate was a heavy dude. He 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 was standing. He he. Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus asked him, Sayest thou this thing? Of thyself, or did others tell it to thee? Right, right. You know, are you saying? Because I know how you talk. Even though you're asking me a question, listen. Even though you're asking me a question, it is really an imperative statement. Uh -huh. So he said, "Art thou king of the Jews?" And Jesus responded to him, "Say now, are you asking this because you know this? Uh, are you asking this because somebody told you this?" Remember, when you're in court, a lot of times people never ask a question that they don't know the answer to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so Jesus came back at it and Pilate answered, am I a Jew? You know, and thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What has thou done? So Jesus didn't answer the question mm -hmm. and Pilate didn't answer the question. Mm -hmm. they, they are jousting. You see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, but 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 they're on a whole nother level of communication. They're on a whole nother level of respect. Je at, see, people will deal with your respect based upon how you respond to what they say. If, if you're talking to a fool, if a fool is talking to you, you need to be very careful how you respond to a fool. 
Okay, so here it comes, and it says, so verse 36, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If That's my right. kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. So Jesus said, since you say I'm the king. Yeah, he, he, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. So he, he didn't say he wasn't king. He's not going to deny that. But he, 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 he deflected and went him and said a little higher. He went a little higher. He said, but, but I'm, my, my kingdom is uh, not from him. Verse 37, Pilate therefore, therefore said unto him, because he said that Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then, since you're talking about your kingdom is not of this world. So we come back around to the beginning again, right? Okay, Jesus answered, thou sayest that I'm a king. And Jesus said, I'm back to the beginning with you, brother. You asked me was I the king, and I went around, and I, then I said this, and you came back. Now you have come to circle back around and asked, am I a king? So to this end was I born. And for this cause, I am into the world that I should bear witness unto the what? Truth. See, everyone that is of the what? Truth. truth. Heareth my voice. Now, what did I say to not synonymous to the truth is light Everybody, or fact. See, when Je Jesus talks about facts, he talks about, he brings light Hallelujah. When the light comes in to your life, all of the shadows have got to uh, squelch down. But do you know how you get rid of the shadows? If you want to get rid of the shadows in your life, just raise the light a little higher. If you want to get rid of the shadows of depression, just raise the truth a little higher. If you want to get rid of the shadows that come into your life that tell you, you can't do this and you can't become this, you can't overcome this. How do we get rid of it? You raise the truth a little higher. Jesus said, if I be lifted uh -huh. up from the earth. Uh -huh. I would, in other words, in this dark, decadent world, it's dark and nobody really understands what's going on. People are killing, setting fires and slashing tires and starting wars and, and what is it, walking in fours and all that kind of stuff because of the darkness. Now, the opposite, I'm cutting across the opposite of truth is ignorance. See, we want to get real deep with it. See, we want to get real, oh, ba 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 shit. Uh-huh. We want to get real deep with it. But the problem is this. People are doing what they're doing a lot of times if they are not just governed by evil. Now, some people, there are a few folks just governed by evil. They have made a deal with the devil. And, and so uh, uh, they going straight to hell with the devil and his angels. Check this out. They understand that. But isn't this something? What, if you got a ticket, you should want to know that your ticket is taking you to Las Vegas. If you bought a ticket to Las Vegas. But isn't this something? It's the ignorance. It's the ignorance of man that will end up getting you somewhere that you had not planned to go. Okay, so as we go, let's see, let's see, let's see. Pilate, therefore, yada, yada, and should bear witness unto truth. Everyone that is of the truth, heareth my voice. Pilate said unto him, what is the truth? Oh, they're having a deep conversation. Pilate said, what is truth? Did I just told you philosophers and, 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 and all kind of scholars have been having dialogue about what is truth. All the way back, here's Pilate asking him, Pilate, hey, listen, listen, listen. Pilate understands that he's talking to a king. Without even saying it. He says, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto him, I find in him. No fault at all. In other words, 
He has gained my respect. Y'all trying to act like this man has lost his mind, that he's saying some things that are not true, that he's making some 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 claims that are out of this world and and what I have found highly educated pilot uh, a, a, a king of wisdom uh, what what I have found is I find no fault in him here comes at all see the king's word is powerful and he could have said I find no fault in him usually that's how we preach it but but if you read the truth, he says, I, I find no fault in him at all. So truth is a prosecuting activity. It's a, it, it's a prosecuting activity. In, 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 in other words, anything outside of the realm of God's word, listen, will be bound by it. We'll be bound by it. You, uh, 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 uh. When Jesus got through talking to Pilate, Pilate said, listen, I'm through with it. I'm through with it. I've had a kingly conversation. I find no fault in him at all. And y'all really need to be ashamed if I could say everything I wanted to say. You, and, and, and so after having this high level princely conversation, Pilate quickly comes to that conclusion, as I said, that this man has not broken any Roman laws and I, and all that he has heard in court uh, were unfounded accusations from the Jewish leadership. So what, in other words, translation, the Jews were lying. Now, what do you do when you're confronted with that? Proverbs 1 and, 1 and 7 says this, and we get out here. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools, listen. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Who? Who despise wisdom and instruction? Fools. Mm -hmm. Fools. Have you ever run up on a fool that you tried to tell them the truth? You tried to show them something about the word? You say, well, Pastor, I've been trying to teach them. I've been trying to... A witness to them. I've been trying to have a conversation with them about uh, uh, what's going on, and they will not receive it. Listen, once you plant your seed, keep on going, because somebody else. Once you plant your seed, now don't. Uh, uh, Everybody is worthy of a seed being planted, but once you plant your seed, some plant, some water, mm -hmm. and God. Gives the increase, Deborah Faye. Plant water and watch God work, because that that's how it's worked. That 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 is that is uh, a law. So let's do this. Uh, truth sets us free. Truth removes uh, the importance of truth. I'm gonna give you these, and then we're going. The importance of truth. What is the importance of truth? Truth removes what hinders love truth removes what hinders love uh, and I'm gonna give you these 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 uh, verses and you can just check them out truth sets us free John 8 and 31 John 8 and 31 truth sets us free uh, James 4 and 8 truth brings us closer to God truth uh, sets us free. Truth brings us closer to God. And I want to hit this. It's going to take me about five minutes in when y'all please forgive me. Uh, we thank God for those of you out there on our YouTube channel. Y'all can put some comments out there. We thank God for you. Um, here's the next question. Should truth be told even if it hurts? Give me an answer somebody yeah, and yeah. comment. Yes, truth should be told even if it hurts. Um, because me not telling you is not helping you to grow. Mm -hmm. For example, if someone says, and I, I'm going to use myself, if someone says, um, tells me, oh, Sister Crystal, 
You ooh, okay? If it's somebody loving that, because I'm not giving everybody the opportunity to do this, you know, plus size person, y'all can all <laughs> But anyway, if someone says, "Oh, you know," after they see me after pandemic and maybe two whatever years ago, but not y'all on here and not y'all on YouTube, okay? God is still working on me. But if they say, "Oh, you," uh, and I, I, I'm, oh, you have you you gained a little weight. Are you okay? Now that's a that's that is true. It might be painful for me to hear. It might hurt me. But what they said, according to me stepping on that scale, is true. It's not an opinion. It's actually true and can be backed up if I step on that scale. On what it when I stepped on it before pandemic and when I stepped on it after pandemic. Now that is just a simple example of that's something that is true, that that can be painful. However, that might be the clue for me to go, okay, all right, I didn't kind of get out here. Maybe I need to go and kind of check and make sure I'm okay. Maybe I need to go to the doctor. Uh, okay, let me make sure I'm all right. Now, me hearing that does not feel good. That doesn't feel good for somebody to tell you that. But it's a true statement. So yes, in that, ultimately, the truth is going to better you. If I'm telling you the truth, and a lot of times people don't want to hear the truth because, not because they don't want to hear it, I think it's very important to deliver it in the right way. I can tell you the truth and cut you. Oh, you showed and got fat. That's totally different than me saying, me pulling you to the side in private and going, hey, is everything okay? That I'm delivering you the same message, but two different ways. So yes, you should tell the truth especially the people you love. How are you going to say you love somebody and you see them going wrong? You know, they're going wrong. You know, you know what they're doing. Um, I've had friends that you, you know, this joker ain't no good. He is not good for you. You're not getting better as a, as a result of being with him. You crying more. You don't know what to do. Anxiety is over here. Depression is over there. Why, why would I let you stay in that? And I say, I'm your friend and I love you, but I won't tell you the truth about what's really going on. Now, if you choose to stay there, that's on you. But if I love you, I, I want the, what's best for you. So I, I need to tell you the truth. And it's All right. We, got, I, I we, we got one. We got one vote for yes. Uh, <laughs> it would do, can we get another one for yes? Or or now, my question was: Should truth be told, even if it hurts? Now. Not should you tell what's true, because we find that what's true today may not be true tomorrow. Uh, uh, in other words, um, truth is something that will never change unless you change it. So should truth be told even if it hurts you or the other person oh uh, crystal says yes king of bema says yes but you have to pray about your delivery okay uh that's what she says anybody else come on pastor, talk. pastor can you hear me yeah, we got you i can see you too okay uh, according to what uh you've said and all that has been delivered truth is the word of God. And you can change that around and say, the word of God is truth. So no matter how it may hurt or doesn't hurt, may, no matter how it looks, the truth is the truth. And I say, yes, tell the truth. Because the truth will draw you closer to God, right? Right. Uh, now, now, let me ask you this. Should the truth, what do you think about when should you share the truth? Is there a certain timing as it relates to sharing the truth? Or just when you know it, you should share it. How is there any wisdom involved? I know Kena says you have to pray about how to. I see you, LaVorda. You say yes. Uh, uh, let's talk about that. Yes, I say, um, as I said in the uh, chat, um, delivery is everything. And sometimes even with it being the truth, it may not be the moment. Um, and sometimes with the truth, it may not be your 
time to deliver it. <laughs> so um, even if it's the truth, we want to make sure that it's receptive. A lot of times it's not receptive. A lot of times the truth is to convict you. That's just what it is. You may not feel good uh, with the truth being told to you, but as Mother Cecily said, the truth is the truth of God. And so whether we like it or not, even if it's, it convicts us, at least we know we have the heart uh, to either make that decision to do right or not. The choice is yours. So, yes. All right. So when we deal with Mother Cecily, say the light of God, when we deal with uh, coming out of ignorance as it relates to the things of God, uh, let's go to John 16, 5, and then we'll finish. John 16 and 5. John 16 and 5. And it says, But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asketh me whether thou goest. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, <laughs> I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. Who will reprove the world of sin? Who will rep reprove the world of sin, everybody? Comforter. The comforter will reprove the world of sin. Okay. And, and so, um, uh, and when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin. Because they believe not on me of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Verse 12, I have yet many things to say unto you. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not through telling you the truth, but I got more to tell you, but you cannot bear it right now. Oh, by Sunday, listen to this. I, I got some more truth for you, but you can you handle all of my truth? He said, I got, but you can't bear them right now. I'm letting you know I got something to tell you that you need to know, but right now you're ignorant of it and you need to really stay ignorant of it for your sake. Can you, can you handle that? Can you handle that? Listen to the Lord. How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truths for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall, ha, shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of me, and shall show it unto you. All things, how many things? All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore, here it comes, there it is. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Verse 16, a little while, and ye shall not see me. Uh, and again, in a little while, and ye shall see me because I go to my Father. Now, here's the thing. Amen. First Lady say, timing is a part of your delivery and setup. Amen. So, here's the thing. Jesus knew the truth. He's talking to his disciples. Elder Bunton, he knew the truth before he chose uh, the disciples. He knew the truth that he was going to be crucified. He knew the truth that, that they were going to be persecuted. He knew all of that. What, what, kind of, what kind of Lord is this? What kind of master is this? That it, somebody could say, the Satan would say, he tricked it to y'all. He tricked it to y'all. 
He tricked you. He got you in that mess. Now he gone, Rick. Ain't that something? He tricked it, y'all. He got you in there and you faithful and now he gone. Now what you going to do? You ever heard the devil talk to you like that? You, you know, it, it got you the old lady in the shoe. Uh, did they have so many children? Didn't know what to do. Now your husband gone. You call yourself all in love. Now you got all these children and, and, and he tricked at you. Uh, all of that, that mother Cecily, and all of us have, you know, the enemy comes to accuse us. But the Lord is saying, listen, I, I got to tell you a portion of this truth right now because you need to be ready for what's coming. I don't need you to be ignorant about what's getting ready to happen right now. But the Holy Ghost is going to come and, and, and explain some more things to you so that you can successfully uh, bear them, be a witness into Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. So we have to be very wise when it comes to the truth. Um, and so sometimes the truth is not for you to tell. It may be for somebody else. You pray for a comforter. Uh, and, and so all of those things, we just have to be very wise because we don't want to uh, hurt anybody uh, by trying to help them. Uh, but uh, so sometimes the truth does hurt. Uh, and you have to be prepared for the truth. Amen. Any, any last comments before we get out of here? Anybody? Anybody? Well, listen, I thank God for you. Uh, we've had a wonderful time today, and I want to challenge everybody right now. I want to challenge you uh, to sow a seed today. I'm going to put this information up, and please sow a seed <clears throat> to Holy Nation. I know God has blessed, and I want to uh, challenge you to sow a seed. You can go to our Givelify app and go to Holy Nation Ministries, and you can sow there. Or you can go to our Cash app, and you can sow dollar sign Holy Nation Ministries, dollar sign Holy Nation Ministries. And you can go to our post office box if you want to mail uh, uh, a gift there of any amount. We thank God for you. P.O. Box 34381, Bartlett, Tennessee 38134. And then you can go out to our website, HolyNationMemphis.org. HolyNationMemphis.org. We're getting ready to uh, unveil our mobile app pretty soon. And we want everybody, I want to put this on your heart to get ready to get that download so you can follow us at any time, have conversations, see what's going on uh, here at the nation. Hold, so sow that seed right now. I want, if you're listening to me, if you're watching uh, us, if you've been blessed uh, by the conversation dealing with heaven and hell, the relevancy of the two, uh, I, I know you have been blessed and I want you to sow that seed today. And you can always go to our website, Holy Nation, holynationmemphis.org, and you can go there. And I thank God. I thank God for all of you. I thank God for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. And um, are there any, any first lady, you got anything? Can you hear me? Uh, uh, anything I need to deliver? Uh, we thank God for first lady. She had her first, uh, um, what would we call that? Uh, as it relates to uh, Tennessee Central. She is our supervisor of women for Tennessee Central jurisdiction. And they had, yeah, they had their, their first women's conference, two in one conference with the workers meeting. And the Lord truly blessed. You can go out there on Tennessee Central uh, and you'll find her out there. And you're going to be able to find her on Holy Nation uh, platforms pretty soon, uh, maybe like tomorrow. Uh, the message that she brought was uh, truly a blessing to us. And we thank God. Let me say amen and thank God to all of those uh, those uh, Bible scholars out there. They're on uh, our uh, Zoom platform. I thank God for you. Thank God for you, uh, Sister Crystal, Elder Bunton, uh, Sister Deborah Faye, Sister Donna, and who is that there? Uh, let's see, Mother Cecily and... All of Sharon Paler, I see you out there. Listen, we thank God for all of you. And just, just, I just want to say this, that everything, and I mean everything, is going to be all 
right. Hello everyone. Thank you for visiting us on social media. Listen, if you are looking for a place where you can get the word of God for your everyday living, Holy Nation Church of Memphis is the place you need to be. Visit us on our social media. Pastor Andrew Papiner is always teaching the Word of God. Uh, our Bible study is at 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights. And then on Sundays at 10 a.m. You do not want to miss it. There is a word in the house just for you, for your everyday living. Also want to encourage you to sow a seed. We do ministry here at Holy Nation, and this is good ground. We go out into the communities and we believe in reaching the families, uh, that is the parents, the children, the grandparents, but we believe in reaching into the community and sowing back and sowing into ministry. Just go to Giveify on, on, on our website. I think the information should be there at the bottom. Go out, sow a seed. This is good ground. We look forward to seeing you at the nation soon.